From the southern point of Africa hails an association of conservationists founded by a few passing on their legacy to many. Their ethics and traditions remain to become the largest association of its kind in the world today. In a country of diverse culture, rich in wildlife resources, unparalleled on the planet, With a history like no other, and a story destined for greatness, these men and women ply their trade. An ancient calling upon an ancient continent. In a modern world. Where each dawn brings new adventures. Where each has its place. Every one as important as the other. Leading the way forward. Supporting sustainability for the generations of the future. With a duty to stand for their beliefs it is in this land you shall find these dedicated individuals. It is in this land you shall find these fearless leaders. This is the Professional Hunters Association of South Africa. This is Faza. The man responsible for founding FASA was Uncle Steve Smith, a legendary professional hunter and conservationist who began his long career in Kenya in 1955. Steve Smith chaired the founding meeting of FASA on the 28th of February 1978 in Johannesburg. This meeting was attended by other like-minded outdoorsmen who were pioneers in professional hunting, game ranching and conservation in South Africa and who later became icons in the global hunting and conservation community. Steve Smith's closing words were, I thank you all for attending and I sincerely hope that this will go down in the history of hunting as the first general meeting of what is to be known as the Professional Hunters Association of South Africa, to be known and respected throughout the world as an association of true professionals in the field of sportsmanlike hunting and conservation. FASA has surpassed what Uncle Stevie had wished for and today it is the largest association of its kind in the world. Boasting a membership of over 1,100 professional hunters and outfitters who are committed to the FASA code of conduct and who adhere to the highest standards in the field of professional hunting and conservation. FASA is the only association in South Africa that focuses exclusively on the field of professional hunting. Our expertise and the vast international and local networks that we have cultivated since 1978 allow us to have an impact locally and globally on issues surrounding professional hunting. FASA engages with government at all levels. This allows us the opportunity to shape the future of professional hunting in South Africa. FASA regularly interacts with the international safari clubs, other PH or guide associations, NGOs and government agencies around the globe on issues relating to conservation, CITES, trade and any other aspects that are relevant to professional hunting. FASA is recognized by our government and many local and international agencies and organizations as the official mouthpiece for professional hunting in South Africa. FASA is the most proactive, dynamic and effective professional hunters association in the world. It is for this reason that we are internationally respected and valued, which is why many of the international hunting shows will only allow exhibitors from South Africa who are members of FASA. It is vital that international hunters book their safaris with FASA members because our members willingly adhere and subscribe to strict code of conduct 
and are subject to our disciplinary oversight process. Each membership application is carefully scrutinized to ensure that applicants with a recorded history of misconduct or unethical behavior are denied FASA membership. FASA offers assistance to all hunting tourists visiting South Africa who may experience difficulties. We also keep our members up to date with the latest developments in the industry, including issues that may have an effect on your safari. Hunting with a FASA member allows you peace of mind because our loyal members are passionate about ensuring that your safari is nothing less than spectacular. FASA welcomes all professional hunters and outfitters in South Africa to join the most dynamic PH association in the world and to become part of South Africa's most respected professionals. FASA also welcomes foreign hunters to the fold through our international membership program. Contact us to find out more about our corporate membership. Last but not least, ensure that when you hunt in South Africa, you do so with a FASA member for your own peace of mind and so that you are assured of a first-class South African experience. The country of South Africa boasts an extraordinary history and extraordinary people. Its diverse cultures, abundant wildlife resources and varied topography make it one of the finest hunting and photographic destinations in the world today. Boasting wildlife resources in excess of 20 million head of game and offering over 37 different endemic huntable species today, South Africa is the continent's flagship in the hunting world. As world leaders in conservation, South Africa not only provides the foreign visitor with an unlimited choice in the hunting field, but also an unparalleled choice in the photographic and leisure industries as well. Spanning two oceans and over 2,800 kilometers of coastline, snow-covered peaks, vast endless plains, modern first world cities and infrastructure, this is the first choice for visitors wanting to experience a world in one country. Whether traveling on your own or with your family, the country has something to offer everyone in your party. As the 25th largest country in the world, there is more than enough space for everyone to enjoy the splendor and uniqueness of this spectacular environment. South Africa, truly a world in one country. Sustainable utilization has played a pivotal role in South Africa's wildlife conservation success story. This fact is supported by global conservation icons, some of whom we recently interviewed. Well, perhaps I should introduce myself first, uh, just to say that uh, my name is Ian Player. I have now had 62 years of involvement in uh, conservation and the environment. 22 years of it spent as a professional wildlife officer. Yes, there is no doubt at all of that. And, and it is particularly illustrated 
by the rhino story, the white rhino story, which I have told in great detail in my book, The White Rhino Saga. Absolutely. Hunting has played a huge role in the wildlife success story over the last 45 years. This all started uh, in the early 60s when Dr. Ian Player realized that the rhinos needed actually to be spread. They were very much compartmentalized. So what happened was rhinos were put into the hands of private landowners for the first time. It was a very uh, difficult move, but it has paid enormous dividends because the hunters who were hunting them got paid very good prices and that money was reinvested in the purchase of land and then reinvested again into the purchase of rhino. But the important thing was that there was an incentive for landowners to care for these animals because there was a value that came through hunting. Uh, my name is Bandi Lemkize, Chief Executive Officer of SM Velokize 10 White Life the official conservation agency for the province of KwaZulu Natal. South Africa has come a long way in terms of sustainable use of resources and uh, I think that is what sets us apart from other countries. And uh, in, the, in, in, in that process, what we have done is to involve communities as well. And that is what is very important. And uh, our model of conservation is really based on sustainable use. That is why we have uh, legal hunting, uh, which is very important for us in terms of spreading the species that we have, and at the same time also satisfying the needs of the communities that live around our protected areas. And I don't think that anybody can argue against that. Um, there's no doubt whatsoever that game industry is far more profitable than cattle, for example, because your per capita return from a hunter is very much more than an eco-tourist, say a bird watcher. There is no doubt uh, that this is the case. Uh, and one has only got to look to the highlands of Scotland, where the deer survive because of the hunting that takes place, takes place on these great estates. Um, the hunters range right from royalty down to the landed gentry in England. But the survival of the deer is, is the deer are there because of the hunting that takes place. As a result of this, now you find that there are over 10,000 game ranches in South Africa. We've got about um, 20.5 million hectares of land which is privately being managed by game farmers as compared with seven and a half million hectares of government land. The industry provides over a hundred thousand jobs. We've got quite a number of cons community conservation areas that have benefited immensely from the sale of the rhinos that they have and that is why even at our auctions we, even, we sell rhinos that come from these particular conservation areas and the proceeds go to the communities. And I must indicate that from where I sit, I believe that the future of conservation it relies in how we relate to communities. Um, I have no doubt that the wildlife in this country would be in serious danger. Uh, and what has happened in uh, Uganda uh, in Kenya are the warnings of what can happen. Uh, there's not much more that needs to be said on that. I must hasten to say that it is my sincere belief that there is no other country that knows better about rhino conservation than South Africa. We've been in this game for a very long time. So when we talk about the sustainable use of resources, especially resources that pertain to rhino, we know exactly what we are talking about. Because we own the greatest population of rhinos in Africa. So if there's anybody that is supposed to talk authoritatively in terms of rhino conservation, it is us. So I don't think the Kenyans had applied their minds 
when they spoke about this. I think they were becoming emotional. And what I've learned in my career in conservation is that we've got to think through whatever proposals we put forward because we don't want to impose our wishes on other people that know better about what we are talking about. Well, if, if, if the lobbyists won the battle and hunting was banned completely in this country, we actually have a fine example that we can refer to of what would happen in a situation like that. In the 70s, for example, all forms of consumptive animal use was banned in Kenya. This is hunting, this is culling, game ranching, etc. It was just stopped. Now, as a result of that, two things happened. The first thing is, South Africans, uh, South Africa's uh, game industry started booming because they couldn't hunt anymore in Kenya, they came to South Africa. As a result of that, more game farms were being formed and more money was being put into preserving game and wildlife in this country. The second thing that happened was, is that, was that the numbers of game in Kenya dwindled dramatically, so much so that both outside and to an extent within the national parks in Kenya, the game numbers have dropped to 60 to 70 percent of what they were in the 70s. I'm talking about two-thirds of the game in Kenya has been lost as a result of the banning of hunting in that country. So this is a very important thing and at our peril will we ban hunting in this country, lest the same thing happens here. Well, South Africa um, has won several awards worldwide as being one of the top tourist destinations in the world. That's the first thing, but apart from that, from a hunting point of view, um, it has the greatest diversity of species that can be hunted within these borders. But everything it takes here, from wildlife, from the sunny skies, uh, to the sea, we've got everything that a tourist would want to see. So I'm saying to all those people that uh, want to come to South Africa, you are welcome to South Africa, the sunny South Africa. It's not just South Africa, it's sunny South Africa. But our wildlife is unsurpassed. And the way in which we look after our wildlife is unparalleled in the world. So come and see wildlife conservation at its best, because that's what we have got to offer as South Africa. But this is where we all came from. So in my own promotions of this country, I've always said, come home. This, is your, this was your original home. And in the many trails that I have taken in Umpholozi and this in Mangaliso and elsewhere, Botswana, uh, one of the first things that comes up when I talk about, you know, you are home, you know, they tell me, no, I come from Brooklyn or wherever it is. They say, no, this is your home. And, and psychologically, it's very interesting that after a few days, people begin to feel at home, which is not surprising, because Africa is deeply imprinted on the human psyche. And then, of course, you have the wonderful, rich, a cultural heritage that South Africa has to offer. You have landscapes which are unparalleled. Um, you have the currency exchanges, which in often, South Africa is, is a good destination to come to in terms of value for money. Then there's also the facilities and the service in South Africa. Uh, our airports have been voted amongst the top in the world and uh, the fact that you, have to, you can communicate in English, there are no language problems here either. So there are a number of huge advantages to coming to South Africa as a destination. So this is a continent of great importance to every human being. And I don't think that you can say that you have really lived until you've been to Africa. One looks, for example, at someone like Teddy Roosevelt, who uh, went hunting with Frederick Courtney Salou, and when Teddy Roosevelt went back to the United States, one of the first things that he did was to create more national parks. It was that inspiration of Africa that made that huge impression upon him. And then thinks, one thinks too of Professor Carl Jung, the greatest uh, world psychiatrist from, from, from Switzerland, who said after coming to Africa, thank God I had the opportunity of going to Africa.
was the most illuminating part of my life. Illuminate your life. Visit South Africa.